Hi there, my name's Fiona and I work for the charity Butterfly Conservation. I want to tell you all a little bit about the wonderful world of butterflies and moths today. Butterflies and moths belong to the insect order Lepidoptera, which means scaly winged insects. You can see from this close up of a moth that their fragile wings are covered in tiny scales. There are around 60 different species of butterfly in Britain. But there are almost 2,700 species of moth in Britain, so they far outnumber the butterflies. There are 180,000 species of butterfly and moth known around the world, but there are thousands more out there that either haven't been found yet or haven't been described by a scientist and given names yet. Good populations and diversity of butterflies and moths are signs of a healthy environment. They are extremely important for pollinating plants. They and their caterpillars are a really important food source for many, many birds, especially when they've got young. Moths are one of the main foods for many bat species. Other small mammals, such as mice, also rely on them as part of their varied diet. Lizards, frogs and toads will all eat them too. In fact, they're on the menu for a lot of other species. All butterflies and moths start their life as an egg, often laid on the food plant or nearby. So often they're laid in ones or twos, but quite often they're laid in batches, like this one on the right. So this shows you a brimstone egg and over time you can see that that caterpillar is slowly developing inside the egg and then it hatches out and for many caterpillars the first meal is actually the eggshell. So lots of caterpillars will eat leaves of one specific food plant or of a number of plants. And some will feed on the flowers or the seeds or the roots of particular species of plants. Some caterpillars actually eat wood and live inside tree trunks and some species even eat animal hair such as wool. So a caterpillar has got two jobs in life really. Number one is to eat and to eat lots and number two is to not get eaten in the process. There are lots of ways in which caterpillars and pupae avoid being eaten. So in order to get a bigger, caterpillars need to eat lots and then shed their skin. They don't just naturally get bigger and bigger as they eat lots. Their skin gets tight and then they stop moving and gradually shed that skin and hatch into a new baggier skin, which they then can go off and feed and gradually fill up. So often caterpillars have about five of these different stages where they shed skins and each stage is called an instar. You can sometimes find the old caterpillar skins on leaves or twigs or so on and even the old heads like you can see on this twig here. The old skin gets left behind such as this one on the right of the lobster moth. It's called a lobster moth because the larva looks a little bit like a lobster. This species attaches its old head casing to itself each time that it sheds its skin. This is probably a way to make itself look too strange to be eaten, so it ends up with this whole tower of heads. Some species have developed amazing camouflage. See if you can spot them. So this one obviously looks like a, a twig. Some are experts at hide and seek and just lie underneath a leaf or on the central rib of a leaf and just blend in. Some caterpillars just flatten themselves against a twig or a leaf and, and manage to blend in. Some just appear too strange to eat. Would you want to eat this caterpillar if you were a bird? It looks like it might make you ill. Uh, it looks very exotic and those tail 
ants that it waves around look like they might sting you, but in reality it can't sting and it isn't poisonous. Some species try to look like others. This is called mimicry. So this caterpillar will spring out at predators like a spider would when its web is disturbed. And this can shock the bird and it can move away. Eye spots on some caterpillars might make them appear larger than they are. So this elephant hawk moth caterpillar will spring about and jerk about when it's threatened and this could startle a potential predator. Some species are covered in irritant hairs that would make you ill if you ate them. On some species the hairs might not actually be that bad for you, but if something tried to eat a hairy caterpillar once and felt ill, they might not try it again. And some caterpillars really just don't look at all tasty, do they? Like this one. Some caterpillars are coloured with warning colours. These are usually yellow, black and red. And this warns predators that they might be poisonous. So some, like the one on the left, really are very poisonous. Um, this only eats one species of plant that is very toxic. And this is the cinnabar caterpillar. And the caterpillar on the right here isn't really poisonous, but it's mimicking a poisonous species in order to avoid being eaten. Once caterpillars are fully grown, they gradually slow down and then they'll enter the pupil stage. So they might spin themselves a cocoon or transform into a chrysalis like the one below. So some species will hang from a plant by a silken thread or a pad that they spin. Many species will pupate on the ground amongst dead leaves or actually in the soil. You can even disturb these when you're gardening. And if you were to pick up a pupa like this one, it might actually jerk about in your hand a little bit. So it's really important to put it back where you found it and be very careful with it because they're very vulnerable when they're like that. So it's possible to find some of these old chrysalises or new chrysalises. If you go looking in your garden or in, in the countryside, uh, you might find them on a fence post, on a gate post, on a tree trunk. Even in your shed or greenhouse, you might find old chrysalises. This cocoon looks really, really camouflaged against this twig. It looks like it's part of the wood. So the adult moth or butterfly develops slowly inside the pupil case and when it is ready and the temperature is right it will start to hatch out. This can take a little while for it to happen. This is an elephant hawk moth that I was given when it was a caterpillar. I kept it, fed it on the plants it needed, kept it over winter while it was a pupa and then kept it until it emerged as an adult. The newly emerged adults take a little while to unfurl and pump up their wings before they can fly away. They're really vulnerable in this stage, but I managed to get a few pictures of this lovely moth before it flew away. Often, males and females of the same species can look very similar, but sometimes they're very different indeed. So the male orange tip is the one on the right with the orange patches on his wings. Females will often blend in more with the plants on which they lay their eggs, as in this picture. Some female moths are actually flightless and don't even have wings. They will spend their entire time on one tree trunk. They can run up and down that tree trunk, but they'll be emitting a scent to attract males to find them. Then they'll lay eggs in that same location. And then they can look more like spiders, actually, and are very camouflaged and difficult to find. Some settled moths look exactly like a piece of bark or broken off end of a twig. Have a look and see if you can spot this moth. It's settled really well on this bit of um, tree trunk here, but it really blends in well. I find it amazing that a lot of these adult moths are nocturnal and will spend their day just settled against a bit of bark on a tree trunk and nothing will find them. Well, sometimes a predator will be lucky and find one, of course. 
Let's see if you can find the moth that is settled on this tree. I'll give you a clue. It's down on the in the right hand corner, near the right hand corner. There it is. I think it's imp almost impossible to spot that one. Now this is an oak beauty moth, which is actually settled on an oak tree here. But if it was to flatten its wings against the trunk there, you might not see it so well. It really blends in well against the mixture of the bark and the lichen on this tree. This moth here is called a Merveille du Jour, which translates from French as Marvel of the Day. And it's a beautiful moth. If it was settled further over to the right, more amongst the lichen, it would be more camouflage and blend in better. Some species can look a lot like leaves, either fresh green spring leaves like this brimstone butterfly or curled up dead leaves like some of these moths and butterflies. And can you spot the moth amongst these leaves? This makes you realise that a lot of moths will just settle amongst dead leaves and you can't see them at all. There it is. Some species look like they will make you ill and they've got those warning colours again. So these burnet moths are day flying species that aren't worried about being eaten by birds in the day because they're red and black and filled with chemical toxins that would make a bird very sick. So most birds know to avoid them. Some species are very good at blending in to their flowery backgrounds. And some aren't, and they just show off. Other species look a little bit like something a bird left behind. There are actually a whole lot of moths which look, when they're settled on a leaf or on a fence post or a bit of bark, they just look a bit like bird poo. Some species spend most of their time flying high up in the canopy of trees and they're very hard to see unless you know exactly where to look. And some species have got these amazing eye spots on them that they all flash at predators if they're threatened. So this is an eyed hawk moth and normally when it's settled you wouldn't see those eye spots. But if it's threatened it will flash those hind wings and this will scare off predators. So one of the rarest butterflies in Britain is called the wood white. Many people would travel a very long way to get a sighting of this species and get very excited about it. Wood white live in small colonies in sheltered sunny areas. They mostly live in woodlands and in open glades. They rely on five food plants for their caterpillars and lots of other flowers for the adult butterflies to nectar on. Some species of butterfly and moth are getting very rare, but we can often help them and their more common relatives by providing the right sort of plants for the caterpillars to eat. These plants can even be grown in gardens and will help lots of other insects such as bees and hoverflies. And then birds and mammals and even reptiles and amphibians will have more to eat too. So these plants here are all food plants for the wood white caterpillars. Aren't they colourful? And they do look lovely in a garden. One of the rarest species of moth in England is the Barbary carpet moth. There are only 12 known colonies of this moth left in the UK, and these are in Dorset, Wiltshire, Gloucestershire and Oxfordshire. Now, many people would get very, very excited indeed and drive a very long way to see this moth. Not many people have seen it. All that the caterpillars can eat of the Barbary carpet moth are the leaves of one particular plant, which is known as common barberry. Like all caterpillars, they start off very small. They're quite hard to spot, but they rest in this very distinctive shape on barberry leaves and they have four instars. So they gradually get bigger and bigger. 
So the Back from the Brink projects are helping the Barbary carpet moth by planting loads more Barbary plants close to these remaining colonies of the moth. This will help the moth colonies to get bigger and in some cases to actually spread and we hope to create new colonies of the moth as well. So by the end of a four year project we're planting over 3,200 new Barbary plants and so far we've planted 2,880 of them. Common barberry is a really good plant for all sorts of wildlife. The flowers attract loads of insects and the berries are a great food for birds and mammals. We can even eat them too, actually. If we're lucky enough to have a garden, we can all help lots of wildlife by growing the right sorts of plants that they need. So if you live in North Dorset, North Wiltshire, Gloucestershire or Oxfordshire, it would be great for the barberry carpet moth if you could grow some barberry too. Here are some fun activities you could do at home. So this is a butterfly word search, so see if you can find those words that are on the right there inside the image of the butterfly. And here's another butterfly word search for you. And this chart shows you some of the main species you're likely to see in your garden, so why don't you see if you can find any on sunny days. You could even become a scientist, write down what butterflies you find and what date you find them on, and send your records in to this Garden Butterfly Survey website. It's really important that we get records of where these butterflies are living so that we can help to look after them for the future. You can find lots of fun ideas on ways to help butterflies and moths in your own garden and ways to look for them through the Butterfly Conservation website. The Back from the Brink website also has got some great ideas for activities you can do at home. You could also look at the Back from the Brink YouTube channel for more activities and videos and look up the project on social media. If you would like to grow some Barbary for the Barbary carpet moth, please do get in touch with me for more details and let us know how you get on. Many thanks for listening and I hope you enjoy the spring and summer in your gardens looking for all the butterflies and moths.